little fun for Christmas. <laughs> God rest ye merry gentle let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from sin. that Jesus showed up, yep. even if he's not a baby anymore. <laughs> Praise God. We're so thankful, amen, that we can come to God and enter his throne room and make petition. That means ask him. And what you're going to ask tonight, amen, ask big things. Ask God to do miracles, amen. This year is going to be completely different than last year. Can you say amen? amen. Let's believe God for, amen, our leadership churches, the Mitchells and the Moraleses in Prescott, Arizona, the Galvans, the Casios, and the Hearts. Let's also pray for the Suspanskis and the Kings in uh, Jacksonville. And let's pray for Paul and the Campbell and uh, Chip and Lori Ganeer in Cape Cod. My pastor, uh, Pastor Keith and Carrie Sullivan, amen, all that God is going to do tonight in their service. Let's also pray for, amen, uh, some local uh, needs here we have in Greece. We're going to pray for Mark Angler, amen recovering from cancer, 
Amen. Joshua Cole is a backslidden son. Amen. And let's pray for our backslidden daughters and sons. And let's believe God this year. Amen. That God will really get a hold of them. Amen. And show them, amen, how wasted their life is. Prodigal living. That means wasted. Amen. God has given uh, us so many good things. Amen. For us to squander it on foolish things. It's just really a shame. It's really sad. Amen. Let's believe God for Larry Pennington and to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. As he acts on truth. Amen. To obey the Spirit of God. Amen. Let's also pray for uh, Wesley and Nate. Amen. Let's pray for our brother uh, Jose Rodriguez who just landed in Albuquerque. Amen. Let's pray that uh, amen. he finds his way to uh, Pastor Jeff Day's church. Amen. In Albuquerque. Let's pray for our police. EMT, uh, all our uh, first responders, amen, those that are uh, there faithfully serving us, teachers, let's pray for um, people that uh, just have a big job to do, social workers, amen, nurses and doctors, and all that is in need, let's pray for Greg Newton, my friend, Joram needs uh, uh, some help, she's in the hospital right now with COVID, and let's pray that God blesses that family with miracles, Amen. Let's pray tonight. Uh, perhaps there's a need in your life that I did not mention. And uh, it's a personal request. You don't need to tell us what it is, but God uh, is going to help you. Amen. And with an uplifted hand, amen. Uh, how many would there be? You have a need in your life. Amen. God sees your hands. And those are online as you are joining us tonight. Amen. I'm going to ask you also to pray and believe God for your very own miracle. Amen. God sees what you're going through. He knows the pressure you're under. And he sees the light in the tunnel for you. He wants to really help you. But it's our responsibility to call on him. Make your petition known before God. And ask. Amen. And God will give you. Amen. His precious will to come to pass. Amen. Let's believe God for miracle healings. And let's pray for those that are sick in body. And those who are suffering in their minds, tormented from the past or different things that they just seem to not let go. Let's pray for 2022 to just be a, 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 an incredible year of reversals. Amen. And things to change. Amen. God to save, bringing backsliders. Amen. Brother David, can you open us up when we all subside? Let's pray, church. God, we thank you, God, for this time to pray, God. We're asking for miracles. Lord, God, bless those that are sick. Bring healing miracles. Mark Angler, we lift before heaven, God. We pray for Liana Jones. God, we pray for your hand to be upon us. We ask you for great things. Come on, church, let's pray. Talk to God. Ask him. Pray for miracles. Pray for your loved ones, your sons and your daughters. And we pray for EMT, those who are here in Greece. We pray for the police. We pray for teachers and nurses and doctors and all those uh, who have different uh, responsibilities that God would help them and give us a great uh, uh, Christmas season that you are glorified, Lord God. We pray in the wonderful, wonderful, powerful name of Jesus. And Brother David. Lord Jesus, we. It seems obvious that we're going to be moving much stronger in the coming year. I'm not sure why it seems obvious, but it is. We ask for that you open our eyes to see you clearly. We're expecting great things for it because we know that the time's almost up. That you're gathering all your church together, that you're getting ready to pull us out of here, and we ask for you to have us be a help and not a hindrance. Give us the grace to really be wide open to whatever you want us to do. Amen. Amen. Let's praise God together. Hallelujah, Lord. Bring it to pass. God be glorified in this place, in this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's take a minute to greet one another. Make everybody feel.
Great to have everybody in church. Hallelujah. Yes. The Eve before Christmas Eve, right? Isn't that yes. the where we are? No. No, the Eve before the Eve before the Eve before the Eve. Before the Eve. Oh, double Eve. Well, we're almost there. Oh, that's right. It's only Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah. Don't say only. I need more time. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to be done. Oh, no, no. No, I just want to see Pam. Yeah, I know. Because I'm so afraid something's going to get in the way of me going to see my grandbabies. Um. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> now all of Rochester knows about your grandbabies. Yes. Good. Praise God. It's good to have everybody That's in good. church. A few announcements for the local congregation. That is, when you drive to church, drive safely, drive slowly. It's better that you get here in one piece. Yep. Praise God. Amen. 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 And we're glad to have you. So uh, let's see where we are today. Wednesday, we're going to be back in church Um on Sunday morning for our adult Sunday school at 10 o'clock. Amen. 10 30 is our morning worship. And uh, then at night we have our 5 30 prayer, and 6 30 is our evening service. Amen. Come and see what God is doing. Uh, we will not be outreaching on Saturday. We will be celebrating Christmas Day. Hallelujah. And uh, having a frenzy under the Christmas tree, unwrapping presents. Uh, having some great pancakes and a great breakfast, amen, with my family. I hope you do the same. Amen. God bless you. We're also uh, still going to continue on with our Bible studies for the winter, and that is uh, for the next uh, few Friday nights, amen, after the first uh, of the year, we're going to kick it back in. Amen. We'll also uh, sporadically do some more movie nights uh, and fellowships. And uh, watch God build this church, amen. Use it as an opportunity to bring visitors, uh, new people, amen. People that might be a little freaked out by a church service, but they could come to a movie night and, you know, throw some popcorn in their face. Praise God. Amen. Let's take the offering. Amen. Let's change the order of the service. And uh, what I have from the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel 1 verses 21 through 22. And this is all about uh, uh, Hannah who could not have a baby, amen, at the time. Now the man Elkanah, her husband, and all his house, they went up to offer to the Lord a yearly sacrifice and offer up his vow. But Hannah did not go, for she said to her husband, not until the child is weaned. So she did have the baby at this time. She said, then I will take him, I will bring him up, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. And then so all of this house was in the uh, style or the habit of going to church, uh, actually traveling a long distance, amen, into Jerusalem, amen, and to go up and make their uh, sacrifice, amen. And uh, it was a habit. Amen. Because of this occasion, his wife did not go. She was weaning the baby, but he went. Amen. She came up later. Amen. Sounds like a long event, a long celebration, but amen. It should be our pattern, amen, to give to God. Take an opportunity to give, amen, when the basket passes by us, amen. And uh, God loves a cheerful giver. Brother David, can you come and take the offering? You may give to God and uh, be thankful for what he's done. Be thankful for what God has done. If he hasn't done another thing for you, I mean, be thankful for him at this point for what he has accomplished in your life. Amen. Be grateful. Let's ask David to pray. Yeah, we thank you, Lord, for all you have done. I look back and I can't even hardly remember oh, who I was. So you've yeah. done a marvelous work, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have plans for us and we thank you, Lord, you give us an opportunity yes, to Lord. participate. We ask you to take what we give and bless it for your purposes. In your name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you for your offering and your uh, tithes besides. Amen. Tithes are holy. Let's sing this song, Joy to the World. Joy to the World.
Amen. If you brought your Bibles, you can read along with us in a minute. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 5. Benjamin Franklin famously, famous, famously, I can't even say that word right, famously said that there are only two things that are certain in life, death and taxes. Well, I would argue that the one thing death and taxes have in common is that they both create a change in your life. And change is inevitable and it is unavoidable. Amen. Life deals some pretty severe blows sometimes. Some cataclysmic events erupt in your life. Amen. Things that you weren't planning on, like a slap in the face. Amen. How wonderful could it be, amen, that life was predictable and there weren't these horrible straits, these horrible things that we have to go through. Man, if everything was all in a line, wouldn't that be wonderful? Mm -hmm. To have something as a guarantee, something that is sure, something that you can trust in. I mean, how about a guarantee from God that God will be with you and that God will be with you in a tangible way? That means you can feel him. That means that you know he's there with you. That means that you have a real Christian relationship with God as a guarantee. Amen. Let's read our scripture right now. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 5. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. Amen. This is entitled Spirit Guarantee. And we're going to talk tonight about the promise of of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When we have the Holy Ghost, when we have God's Spirit living inside of us, there are several things that accompany that relationship with God living inside of us. We can have uh, the knowledge, the knowing part of the relationship. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, a.k.a. your body, your body, my body, if it's going to decay, if it's destroyed, we have a building from God, a house that's not made with hands, that's eternal in the heavens. We can know this with a confidence that when we part from this flesh, this thing that we wear, this body suit, our soul will return to the Lord God who created it. Amen. We can have this knowledge. Amen. There's a groaning. 2 Corinthians 5, 2, For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. How many would be ready for their glorified body right about now? aches and pains <laughs> every day you wake up and there's something wrong with your body you find a new thing well how did that get there I can't bend over anymore I can't do any push ups pull ups I can't exercise I can hardly get up out of bed <laughs> if indeed having been clothed we shall not be found naked that's a good thing for we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up by life. That means that old dead body that you've been carrying around for 50 years, you can trade it in for a new one. A glorified body. Amen. We also have an assurance of the resurrection in this scripture. God even gives us the grace to believe. You know why you're here? It's not because you simply repented and prayed and everything. God did everything for you. He even put that grace, that desire to know him inside of you. We don't really have anything to brag about. Let's be honest. Amen. Our confidence, amen, is in the Lord Jesus. So we are always confident. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 6, knowing that while we are home, in the body, 
We are absent from the Lord. So we look at this and we understand that when you depart from your body, amen, you are going to be present with the living God. Amen. There's no uh, temporal place. Uh, there's not a purgatory thing. He says here we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that's something that we can be excited about. You know, we have a confidence. And 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. So if you're looking at your life through the lenses of your eyeballs and your perception, what you hear and the things that you're feeling, amen, you're missing it. We walk by faith and not by sight. We're walking through this life. Sometimes it doesn't make any sense what we're doing, but we know that God has told us to do this. We had been called out of darkness and into his light. We have a new way of living, a new way of thinking. We walk by faith now. Our lifestyle is completely and radically opposed to everything that you've been taught by your parents, by your uh, where you were brought up, what side of the tracks you were on, what school you went to. And then it's completely different. And then when the Christian soul leaves their body, it teaches here that we die, we immediately return to God. Amen. For the non-Christian, the unrepentant sinner, or the backslider, their soul leaves their body and goes straight to judgment. God forbid anybody in here. So let's start this sermon and look at our need. We need to have an assurance for our future. There is so much ambiguity about one's future. Amen. I've been saved for 35 years and there's something new every year I go through. There's always going to be a trial. There's always going to be something new. You cannot uh, figure things out, however uh, smart, intellectual, uh, sophisticated, uh, cute you are. You're, you're not going to be able to have uh, your handle or a grip on life. There's ambiguity. Things are not set in steel or in concrete. We are not usually aware of what is coming in the near future. Amen. Amen. It's a crapshoot. We have no idea what's going to happen. It's a gamble. So we need an assurance for our future. Generally, we have no confidence that in the end we will be protected and safe. People in the world, I don't know how you think, amen, but hopefully as a Christian you have a different mindset than people in the world. Their relationships are very unstable. Amen. People show up on jobs and they tear the place up because they're having a problem with the baby daddy and the baby mom are fighting. There's no confidence in relationships that are in this world without Jesus. We have no assurance what's going to happen. There's an anxiety here that we've all experienced with the SARS CoV2 began to spread across the world. It's COVID-19, you might know it as. Its appearance, this writer shares with which was a first cause of mild concern soon turned into a serious worry to more people they received a diagnosis uh, in the beginning scientists knew very little about this novel virus and the disease it caused the unknowns the virus's remarkably rapid spread incited fear among health professionals scientists and the public Soon restricted travel, lockdown, mask mandates, physical distancing protocols were implemented as a tactic to slow COVID-19 spread. Widespread media hysteria, can you say amen? It was just, it's just all over the place. Coverage detailed every nuance. And what I hated is every time on the radio you'd listen to the news, they would say the amount of people that, uh, contracted COVID or they would give the detail, the number 5,670. Who's keeping track of that? I mean, it's just so dark and dismal. Why do they do that to us? The ever-changing pandemic landscape as world leaders and health experts wage war 
an invisible threat. There was a shortage of supplies, supposedly, that was happening. I noticed from the Chinese government urged households to stock up on daily necessities ahead of winter in case of emergencies, food shortages, etc. There's a widespread concern online. And now we have the Omicron. Did I say that right? Yeah. From Africa. That's the new bug that's going around. Amen. The new scare. Want to hear the news? We need... The no, first one died yesterday. Confidence in our faith. We need to have confidence in our faith. Faith is our confidence. Amen. Many times we look at the way the country is falling apart and we don't see any hope. Amen. It can be very depressing if you're watching it for any length of time on your favorite uh, media out, output. Maybe what worked in the past for you, uh, personally, you're dealing with crises. It's not working now. You can't trust in the old way of working through problems and relationship difficulties and things that are beyond your control. You can't, you can't use those same tricks that were in your bag because they will not work now. Many people have lost faith in government. They've lost faith in their own ideas, their own lives. Turning to God with our whole hearts will bring confidence to our future. Amen. As you completely surrender to God, God, this is my life. I'm going to do what you want me to do from here on in. I'm not going to play religious games anymore. I'm not going to pretend this is a joke. I'm going to get serious about it, and I'm going to serve you. I'm going to completely surrender to your plan. Amen. We need to obey his commandments. Amen. Even better to obey the Lord as he is speaking to you. If you're a born-again Christian in here, you have the Holy Spirit that is talking to you. He's trying to break into your uh, consciousness and speak to you about specific things, amen. And when you obey him, amen, that whole cloud, uh, that whole nervousness that you're manifesting will go away. Your confidence is through your faith in Jesus Christ, amen. Secondly, let's look at the promise of the Father, amen. Some of you grew up with a pretty good father, right? He said he was taking you to the park. You know, he'd take you to the park. Sometimes he would say, I'm taking you, you know, to the lake or we're going to go camping or whatever. He would follow through on it. Let's look at the promise of our Heavenly Father who is much better than you or I. And uh, I want to first study this idea of a fire baptism. Amen. That baptism of fire from Matthew 3, verse 11 John the Baptist is teaching, he said, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now think of that imagery. That's completely different to, to water. Water is soothing. Water is refreshing, right? But this is a Fire baptism. Amen. And Jesus says this baptism is superior to the water baptism. It's good. The repentance is good. Changing your life is good. But so much more important is to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who is the promise of the Father. Luke 24, 49. Jesus is speaking here. He says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. He's talking after he's been risen from the dead, right before the book of Acts really begins. He says, But wait in Jerusalem for that to happen. Terry, he says in the city, until you are endued with power from on high. You know, reaching the world is a giant task. And Jesus commissioned you and I to go and preach the gospel 
to the entire planet. That's a tall order. We're going to need something more than us. We're going to need some real power in our lives if we're going to reach the world. Can you say amen? You know, Jesus said something is coming. Something gigantic is about to occur. Something supernatural. It's revolutionary. It's enormous. Jesus taught about an event that was coming shortly. Something where great power was going to be released to his believers. His believers were together, which is good. They were in the upper room. Amen. They had no idea what to do, but to wait and to pray. Amen. Because something was coming. Great power was going to be released into the individual believer. Great power was going to be released into the church. And great power was going to be experienced in the world. Amen. Something powerful and extraordinary was about to happen 2,000 years ago. And then think about the birth of Jesus. That was an extraordinary event that was prophesied hundreds of times in the Old Testament. And finally it happened. Amen. Something extraordinary was about to happen. And the scripture says, in the fullness of time, God was born in Jesus, amen, through a virgin. Something extraordinary. And then we understand that the believer tonight has a measure of power in that you have believed that Jesus took your sins off of yourself and put them upon himself and let that judgment fall on him. You believe that you have a certain amount of power, amen, that's been released into your life. You're repenting. You change your mind. You're not going to think that way anymore. You're not going to live that way anymore. There's going to be a change in your life. Amen. But there is more to Christianity than being born again. There's the born again experience, which is awesome. But even further is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This thing that was prophesied, amen, in Joel, amen. He said, this is that, as Peter was quoting the scriptures in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Something specific. And in being assembled together with them in Acts 1 4, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. This is something that, you know, hasn't been around for very long. I mean, it started in the book of Acts and kind of like died off. There's always been a remnant, I want you to know. But because of the Azusa Street revival, amen, and some other revivals where they started speaking in tongues. Amen. And the, the pattern was actually uh, in some of these churches, they would have pews in the front here. And these people, sometimes they call them the anxious seats. Or people were invited to come forward because God wanted to fill them with the Holy Ghost. They would say, we're going to tarry. We're going to wait. And some people waited all night to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Praying, seeking God, asking God, fill me with your power. Amen. Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, this is Acts 2, uh, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound as a mighty rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they were appeared to them, divided tongues of fire and each one sat on them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's supernatural. That's going to win the world. We, we're not equipped to win the world without some real power. And then that comes through the Holy Spirit. And secondly, we can also enjoy a comfort that God gives to the believer. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And you know, another name for the Holy Ghost is the Comforter 
or the helper. How many times in the Christian life do you find yourself without answers, without strength? You're just like been beat up by the devil. You've been lied to. He's harangued you. He's just dragged you around like a rag doll. And you just, you're tired of fighting. The Christian life is a life of fighting. And amen. You need to have this comfort inside of you that everything's going to be all right. You can't get it by just talking to yourself. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I do believe in spooks. I do believe in spooks. I do believe in spooks. Those who saw the Wizard of Oz. Amen. You can't convince yourself you're going to be comfortable. It's going to be all right. You can't really do that. You need something from heaven. And that's why Jesus said, wait for this thing to happen to you. And the comfort, supernatural comfort is going to come upon you and help you and carry you when you can't even walk. There's so many disappointments in the Christian, this old Christian life. Amen. It's such a, a long journey. Amen. There's battles to fight. Amen. There's discouragements. There's disappointments. And sometimes there's complete failure. God, I give up. I'm going home. I can't do this anymore. Amen. There's a Greek word I want you to try to memorize. It's called the parakletos. And it's one who pleads for another's cause before a judge. A pleader. I don't even know if that's a real word. A pleader, pleading, helping, please. They go before a judge. They are like a counselor. They're there to help you. Uh, like a lawyer, let's say. It's probably a, a negative idea, but uh, or a legal assistant, an advocate. And there was a, a man from ancient Greece. Who's, this was his job. He was uh, Diomathenes. He was one who pleaded for another's cause. An intercessor, in the widest sense, one writes, is a helper or a succor, an aider or an assistant. So of the Holy Spirit, destined to take the place of Christ and with the apostles, to lead them to deeper knowledge of gospel truth, to give them the divine strength needed to enable them to undergo trials and persecutions on behalf of the divine kingdom. Think about what you're going through. It's bad, but it's nothing like these boys went through. Men and women were, read the book, Fox's Book of Martyrs. They were flayed. They were set on fire. Amen. They were dipped in tar and they lit to Caesar's palace. Some of you might uh, know they call them Roman candles from the Steely Dan song. I don't know if you're aware of that. But the things that you and I go through, they're bad. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to uh, low, you know, make them not seem like they're important to you. But, amen, God needed to help these as they were going through trials and persecutions. Amen. God wants to be there for you to help you to recover. Amen. To save you. Someone who will save you from danger and violence. That is the definition of of Secur or uh, the intercessor, the Paracletos. Without the Holy Spirit inside of us, we are doomed to suffer from life's emotions, amen, the blows that constantly come upon us, amen, we will just want to give up. We need something supernatural, and that is the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Paul says, yo, man, I speak in tongues more than all of you. Some people had a problem with it. They said, it's, it's not real. It's, you're making those words up. It's dead. It's for another time, for another dispensation. But amen, Jesus wants each and every one of us to not only speak in tongues, but to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues is the evidence or the result of it, the initial evidence but really, what's really important is being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues is good. Speaking in tongues will build up your inner man. It will strengthen you. It's like flexing. 
Amen. It's like uh, just reminding you of all the wonderful works of God. Speak in tongues when you're in trouble. Speak in tongues when you're having problems. It will build up your inner man. It will build up your faith. Speaking in tongues also chases the devil out of your situation, out of your house, out of your problems. Speaking in tongues will send those demons packing. And then speak in tongues. Amen. As the Spirit gives you utterance. Praise God. We have a spirit guarantee. Amen. It's a guarantee. It's our confidence. Amen. A guarantee is a formal promise or an assurance, typically in writing, that certain conditions will be fulfilled, especially that a product will be repaired or replaced if not of a specified quality or durability. We offer a 10-year guarantee against rusting. You've heard those guarantees, right? And then you buy new tools, you can get a warranty on them. It'll last for a couple years. So God is speaking to you and I tonight. And he's speaking through eternity that he will not go back on his word. What he's promised you is good. He's going to follow through with everything that he has spoken to you about. There is an imminent judgment that is prepared for the unrighteous, which is called hellfire. And that is so serious. Amen. God gives the opposite for the believer. A complete confidence that we will be, amen, protected. We will be helped. There's a hopeful expectation for the obedient believer whose heart is open. They're ready to receive God's promises. They're ready to do what he says. And then there's a, a, a complete confidence in that. Amen. A formal pledge to pay another person's debt. This is a guarantee. Or to perform another person's obligation in case of default. You and I, amen, have had our sins paid for completely. Amen. God has promised us a supernatural life for those who believe. If we simply believe, amen. Mark 16, 14, later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. This is kind of a, uh, an awkward moment that Jesus is having with his disciples. So he showed himself to 500. He revealed himself to Mary and some of the women uh, on that day that he rose uh, in the garden there. And uh, they started to tell everybody about it, but they didn't believe. The other people had a problem. Because they did not believe which he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. This is verse 15. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That is the MO of a Christian, a born again believer. That is part and parcel. That is the way that they live. That is who they are. Amen. These signs will follow those who believe. So this guarantee that God gives us will provide a formal assurance or a promise. This reminds me of the marriage vows, or the wedding vows that you made on your wedding day. You know, if God is, you know, promised to be with you in sickness and health, he's going to help you with your problems. He's going to be with you when you're assaulted by the devil. And then nowadays, most people are just blowing hot air when they do their wedding vows. Can you say amen? Most people, they don't make it, man. 
just don't make it. They make the promise. I promise to be there for my spouse. And then when things don't work out the way they want them to, they're like, I'm out of here. They pack their bags. They file for divorce. This is not God. God is in it to win it for you. Amen. Guarantee is a legal term, more comprehensive and of higher import than a warranty or security. It is most commonly designated as a private transaction by means of one person to obtain trust, confidence, or credit for another engages to be answerable for him. Amen. The guarantee that every spirit-filled believer enjoys. Amen. There's comfort. This is the working in our spirit that everything's going to be okay, even through the ups and downs. Secondly, God wants to help you because of life's complexities and irregularities. It is an asset to have God's personal working to bring favor to the individual. God wants to really help you. God wants to be with you Amen. And be in your situation. And as you ask for that, he's going to help you. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And lastly, God gives a boldness to you when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Because God has commissioned us. Amen. We can with courage and faith reach out to others and to witness and share our faith. Amen. So, for you in here, if you're a born-again believer, God wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit so you can be bold. This is not to be a punk or to be obnoxious, but we're called to spread the gospel. We're called to share the good news about Jesus Christ. And many of you think about it and you're afraid to tell people or to bring it into conversation. Amen. I've been there. Believe me, I've missed opportunities when God said, go witness that person. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then I felt, felt bad about it. So the next time I had a chance, I'm like, okay, yes, I'm going to go do it. But God will give you a boldness to follow through with that so you don't have to be afraid of the outcomes. Leave the outcomes up to God. You're afraid, oh, I don't want to be a, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to embarrass Jesus. How can you embarrass Jesus? There's no way. When God gives you the opportunity, he opens the doors, something happens in the conversation, you can move right in, amen, and boldly begin to just and confidently tell somebody about Jesus. Or maybe just invite them to church. There's different times, different seasons, different words to use, amen, to let the Holy Spirit use you to become a soul winner. Amen. And become bold. Amen. The Bible says in Acts, I think it says, maybe Acts 4 or 5, it says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. That should be you and I. Amen. And lastly, uh, supernatural power, this is something that we need to destroy hell's plans. Something supernatural that is beyond tricking people or uh, trying to reason with them and convince them. We need God to show up. Amen. Every demon is subject to the authority of Jesus. And that authority that you and I have, amen, is the power, amen, that we can uh, put down principalities and rules of darkness. We can have authority in our lives, dominion in our character, and we can have the Holy Spirit filled inside of us to overflowing so that we can become a threat to the devil. Amen. God's promises are good. Can you say amen? amen. Dwight L. Moody in closing, he's quoted as saying, God never made a promise that was too good to be true. Think about that. Wrap your mind around that. Amen. And God is here for you to fill you with his power. Amen. To fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you want to get saved today, amen, we're going to count it a privilege to pray with you. If you're saved, amen, you can uh, get filled with the Holy Spirit this evening. So let's go ahead and close our eyes and bow our heads.
And I'd like to give an offering, an opportunity for anybody here you're not saved, or maybe you're backslidden. Amen. You have no power in your life. You find yourself doing the craziest things that don't make any sense. There's no virtue in it. There's no uh, character to it. And the Bible says that unless a man is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't wrap your mind around it. You can't comprehend the love that God has for you. Amen. The Bible teaches in John 3, 16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. And you're sensing that, you know, God really does love you. You can change your life, amen, as you repent of your sins. You can get right with God tonight and be born again. Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. There needs to be a repentance in your mind. Amen. If you're in this place and you're listening online, God wants to change you from the inside. And that's going to be a miracle. Jesus himself has died for your sins. He wants to wash you clean, wash your conscience, to cleanse you, make you a brand new person. I mean, how many would there be tonight that this sounds like this altar call is for you, that you want to get saved, you want to come to Christ and turn your life around? Amen. Whether you're not saved or maybe you're backslidden, you're not right with God, you're sure, amen, that if you were to stand before Jesus tonight, you're not sure, you're not, you're not confident that you would be invited in through heaven's gates. Welcome into the joy that I've prepared for you. You're not sure that that's what he's going to say to you. And God tonight wants to give you that confidence. Amen. That it's true. You can be forgiven of your sins. With an uplifted hand, you'd like to pray. You want to give your life to Jesus. Perhaps you've raised your hand online. You know that God is reaching out to you. God is trying to touch your heart. Amen. Don't let it be hardened. Harden not your heart. Let it be soft. Let it be uh, convictable. Let, let it be soft and ready to receive God's word. Amen. Let him touch you with his love. His blood was shed on the cross for you that you could have everlasting life. Amen. Praise God. We're going to uh, pray for you if that's you that we're reaching tonight, amen. I want to ask you to close your eyes, amen. Bow your head in respect to what God is going to do for you and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. I need you to change me. Wash me in your blood and give me true power so that I can change. I thank you for the cross. I believe Jesus died for me and I believe that he rose from the dead. And I know you have a wonderful plan for my life. Take over my life. Take over my mind and bring me into fruitfulness and blessing. I thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise God. If you did pray that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, I believe that you are saved. And I'm going to invite you to come to a church service and see what God is doing here in Toys R Us Plaza, Greece, New York. Amen. Let Jesus become your life. Amen. I want to open up the altars. Amen. We're going to sing this song together. Let Jesus become your confidence. Amen. Open up your heart and ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that you can have these things working in your life. Amen. Be a fool, and you are my.
worship God. Amen. Praise God. If there's anybody here this evening you'd like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, and you'd like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if there's anybody here you'd like prayer for that, amen, I'm going to ask you to come forward, and we would love to pray for you. Praise God. Anybody like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Praise God. So I want to let you know in a little secret. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, they did not pray for me. Nobody prayed for me. Nobody laid hands on me. I was in the prayer room, and uh, I didn't know what to pray. The first couple weeks of my salvation, I just was there, and these little syllables and um, murmurings and little words were coming out of my mouth. And then little by little, for me, completely different than most people. I began to speak in tongues and, you know, when, when the preacher would say, let's worship God, and then normally and naturally we would all speak in tongues or worship God with English and clap and give him glory. So it might happen different for you. I don't know exactly, but I would seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit and wait on God, call out to him, ask him to fill you, amen. That's where your power is going to come through into your heart, amen, into your life. Man, you were, did somebody lay hands on you, sister? Yes, sir. <laughs> Brother? They laid hands on me and told me it was work soon, and I didn't feel a thing for three months, and then I started speaking. Everybody has a little different experience. Yeah. So let's go ahead and continue to believe God. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. No, I'm going to see you before that. Yeah. God bless you guys. <laughs> amen. Have a great night. And a wonderful Christmas. Enjoy your family and all that God is doing in your life. Amen. Brother David, can you pray for us? Lord Barry, you want to pray for us? Sure. Thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight, Jesus. Yeah. Thank Please you, give Jesus. us the power to be the people that you want us to be. Yeah. That we can become better Christians and, and happier lives. Please help us to find others that need us yes, and you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming.